What is more important to us than our health? A question that's never easy to answer. And in today's modern world of emerging discoveries, research in healthcare and medical treatment is full of promise and hope. Leading research is conducted in Israel and, of course, right here in the United States. One such company is Neostem, an international biopharmaceutical company and one of the leaders in the area of therapeutic and diagnostic applications of adult stem cells for medical treatment. Dr. Robin Smith is chairman and CEO of Neostem and she'll update us on this very encouraging subject. Later in the program, we have an exclusive interview with one of the world leaders in scientific medical research, the Director General of the Adassa Medical Organization. Professor Shlomo Mo Yosef will join us later in the program, but first we have these messages and a video. Adult stem cells are unique and unspecialized self-renewing cells with the potential to develop into other types of cells. The bones, or bone marrow, are the primary location in which adult stem cells are produced. In day-to-day -day life, a small number of stem cells are able to leave the bone marrow and travel throughout the body in the circulating or peripheral blood, where they assist in the normal repair and defense of the body. During normal stem cell function, two types of cells in the bone marrow, called stromal cells and osteoblasts, produce a chemotactic protein called SDF1 that attract stem cells. Also, endothelial cells lining bone marrow blood vessels capture blood circulating SDF1 and release it into the bone marrow. As SDF1 is released or secreted in the bone marrow, a chemotactic gradient is formed with higher concentrations of SDF1 located closer to the stromal and osteoblast cells. SDF1 interacts with the chemokine receptor called CXCR4, which is located on the surface of stem cells, bone marrow endothelial cells, and other stromal cells. As SDF1 interacts with CXCR4, it creates a bond which signals the stem cells inside the bone marrow to crawl toward the stromal and osteoblast cells. The chemotactic signal prevents stem cells from leaving the bone marrow for the peripheral blood. In order to collect adult stem cells, the cells must first be prompted to enter the peripheral blood. Through the administration of a stem cell mobilizing agent called granulocyte colony stimulating factor, or GCSF, enzymes, including neutrophil elastase, cathepsin G, and MMP9, are activated inside the bone marrow. These enzymes cleave the SDF1 protein, inhibiting its ability to interact. In addition, the CD26 protein that is expressed on the surface of a subpopulation of stem cells also cleaves SDF1. When interaction between SDF1 and CXCR4 is blocked, the stem cells are no longer held in place inside the bone marrow. They are now free to move into the peripheral blood. Once circulating in the peripheral blood, stem cells can be harvested by a process called apheresis. With us now is Dr. Robin Smith of Neostem Research. A real pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for having me. I've always been personally quite fascinated with the concept of stem cell research and feel that anyone disapproving of it is being rather unintelligent. Until recently, the administration was really obstructing research. What has changed? Well, I think it's more and more of an understanding whether you are pro-choice or not is, has a lot to do with your, your view on abortion seems to have indicated people's views on stem cells. But it's important to remember that stem cells do not necessarily come from embryos. You can have adult stem cells and there are stem cells that have a lot of the morphological characteristics, the ability to do the same things and be helpful in regenerative medicine and treating different illnesses. Please elaborate and tell our audience what ailments, what problems can be resolved through stem cell therapy? 
Right, so I guess I'd like to focus on adult stem cells. So that's the non-controversial. We just signed actually an agreement with the Vatican who's excited about our technology of how you can use adult stem cells to promote wellness, regenerative medicine, and you don't have to have the ethical issues of having to kill a fetus to get the stem cells. These are adult stem cells from you and me. After birth, we have the ability to take stem cells, collect them from parts of our bodies that are safe, non-invasive, and use them for therapies. And although it's standard of care for things like leukemia, lymphoma, and certain anemias, there are 2,900 clinical trials here in the United States alone looking to use these stem cells for heart disease, MS, lupus, macular degeneration, wounds, how these stem cells, our own body's repair mechanisms, can be used to treat these illnesses to repair the tissue that's damaged. Interesting. In fact, my own daughter might have lupus. We're not uh, quite sure yet. And it will be very interesting to see if some miraculous cure is available using technology. Yeah, so for some reason her immune system now has turned to fight herself. It's an autoimmune disorder, so the question is how can these stem cells be, can be used to give her a new immune system that won't fight herself to cause the problems that occur with things like MS and lupus. This is all very interesting and many of our viewers have health concerns as to people all over the world, I presume. Tell us a little bit more about specific ailments and success stories stem cell therapy is offering at this time? Sure, well, you know, a gentleman walked into my office about three years ago, and he had died. He had a heart attack. They did bypasses. They did six bypasses to his heart, and he was on a heart transplant list. They said it takes two years to get a heart. He was on oxygen around the clock, and that is the cutoff, 70 years old, for getting a heart. And he got into one of these clinical trials around the United States using stem cells to treat heart disease. And he was in the control group, so he got nothing. And a year at the end of the trial, they gave all the people in the control group their stem cells. And he now is on treadmills and he was playing tennis. It really changed his life. He didn't only live, but he was able to be functional and do the things that he could have done before his heart attack because it repaired the muscle of his heart. He lived seven years and he ended up dying very recently of a cancer not related to the stem cells. But those stem cell therapy, it bought him seven years of quality of life. So we're seeing more and more in these clinical trials where stem cells are being used to treat the diseases, that they are going to impact how treatment will be done in the future. The question is, and what's not standard of care, is what type of stem cells? How do you deliver the stem cells? And that's what all of these trials are looking at, is what the optimal therapy, the optimal treatment regimen will be for using stem cells to treat illnesses. And once more and more data comes out there, more safety data, et cetera, outcomes data, we'll be able to see how stem cells can impact tissue and regenerative medicine the way we're damaged by things that happen to us from our environment and as we age. Most fascinating. Is there also a dental application? I understand that in England they were actually trying to uh, grow teeth. Yeah, there's a lot of applications. We see a lot with stem cells. It's very far advanced for musculoskeletal disease, building bones and cartilage, and certainly the, the oral, um, whether it's teeth or bones or jaws, is a great area. People have focused on using it for um, the different parts of, of breathing that have been damaged, uh, cardiac muscle. Uh, people are looking to use it for macular degeneration, wounds, burns, diabetic feet that don't have blood supply to go to the area. The stem cells help repair the tissue and bring vascularization to those areas so that not only do the tissue last, but it, but it can live because it has a vascular supply. So the stem cells are endless. I think what's important to remember is we all have stem cells. They circulate in our body. They're the way that we repair ourselves. When you go to the gym and you work out and go to sleep at night, these stem cells are circulating to repair the tissue. But when you have a real problem, like a heart attack or a stroke, you don't have enough of these cells to go to the area for repair. So the more you can have the stem cells collected today and stored for the future, the better off you may be so that you have a bioinsurance for yourself for the rest of your life. Fascinating. Tell us a little bit about your company. So our company is focused on the technology of you and I as adults in a safe, non-invasive way of having stem cells collected for ourselves. You've heard of bone marrow transplantation. Over 50% of people can't find a donor when they need it. This is a way you can have your stem cells collected while you're healthy so that they're there for your use. And we're very focused on taking the stem cells, subdividing the different stem cell populations, and looking at how these individual stem cells can best treat illnesses. We're working here and abroad in China to make the 
the technology advance it more quickly through clinical trials. And we have partnerships with the Department of Defense who's helped funding some of our technology for wounds for the soldiers. They want to help them be repaired to where they are before they go out and receive combat injuries. And then uh, organizations like the Vatican who are so excited about the ability to take science and new technologies to improve human suffering without being a violation of faith. So we find that we're getting a lot of interest in our technology and our science and are allowing people to understand the benefits of stem cells and recognize that it's not has nothing to do with faith or religion. It's all about hope for the future. What are your company's plans for the future? So our company has three different prongs. We have a very profitable pharmaceutical company in China, and then we have our stem cell therapy in China, and then we have our stem cell division in the United States. Our whole focus is how to enhance technology, how to help treat diseases in traditional pharmaceuticals as well as stem cell-based therapies in the future. The more we can do to educate the world on the importance of stem cell based therapies to understand that it doesn't have to be controversial, the more we get people moving technologies forward from around the world. There's terrific technologies from Israel, from Japan, um, China, the United States, the United Kingdom. There's wonderful technologies and the more we can work together to consolidate the different technologies and companies, the farther along we'll be in using stem cells to treat diseases. As I mentioned earlier, I personally believe there's no question as to how essential it is to implement these intelligent solutions that bring hope to so many people suffering from serious diseases. Please tell our viewers how they might contact you or your company for more information. Um, you can go to our website. It's www.neostem.com. You can always give us a call. We're in New York City, uh, American Stock Exchange listed company. The symbol's NBS. Um, you can Google us, I'm Dr. Robin Smith, and uh, we're happy to talk to anyone, happy to be of help if we can. It's a tremendous opportunity for growth, for health, for wellness, and uh, we love talking about our company and are happy to share any of the good news. Dr. Smith, this has been most fascinating, very interesting, really, and we'd like to have you on the show again sometime in the future. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, and it's be fun to come on and let you know how we're progressing with our technology and how people are being treated with stem cell therapies. Love to have you back on. Thank you. I'll be right back.